Hello friends, this is MK here. We have so many good computer games these days, you can immerse yourself in a different world and distract from all this mess that's happening around the world. But the next generation graphics era that came so suddenly rendered the popular GTX 1060 useless, incapable of running modern games. Someone will say you can always buy a new graphics card. A 3050 costs about 300 bucks now. But on the other hand, 300 bucks is 300 bucks. You can spend it on winter tires, for example, or say an annual subscription to the gym, if you know what I mean, or even for Christmas gifts. In general, everyone will surely find a use for this money, and nobody wants to play games with a blurry 720p picture. Today, I will tell you about advanced scaling technologies that often allow you to significantly boost the performance of your card with just a slight loss in image quality. This is MK, let's make your graphics card run all the games you want. Let's go! And we will start with the first version of AMD Fidelity Super Resolution Technology, or FSR 1.0. What is it all about? It is based on the good old Langzos post-processing filter, which has been used for scaling photos and videos for more than a decade now. But still, we need to thank AMD for popularizing this method. The main thing is that it runs literally on anything, and although AMD officially says that only GTX 10 series, RX 400 series and newer cards are supported, in practice it runs even on the old Intel integrated graphics. However, this is also its main disadvantage. Since FSR works on anything, it means this technology is simple. It's just a post filter that, according to its algorithms, tries to raise the sharpness and clarity of the picture without relying on machine learning or previous frames in any way. As a result, the difference between native resolution and FSR is quite noticeable. But still, it's much better than just setting a smaller resolution in the game settings. The second disadvantage is that if your game does not have a native support for FSR, the game interface here will also scale up from lower resolution. That is, the text and icons will become slightly blurred and a bit bigger than they should be. Officially, FSR already has 50 games supported, but what if you want to play The Witcher and your GT 1010 stubbornly rejects that idea? Well, it is for such cases that several utilities have been developed that allow you to use this scaling technology in any games under Windows 10 and 11. There are two popular programs, Lossless Scaling and Magpie. The former is not exactly free and it is not available in certain places, but the latter was created by a kind Chinese comrade who uploads and updates it absolutely for free. So we will use this one. Using this piece of software is as simple as it can be. Launch it, select the FSR method, win RT capture, and optionally change the hotkeys. After that, open your game, set it to window mode, and reduce resolution. For example, use HD instead of Full HD. Now it only remains to press the hotkey and voila, the game will stretch to full screen using FSR. Now we can enjoy the noticeable FPS increase with a slightly blurred picture. FSR 1.0 is good, but still, it is way behind the smart DLSS technology. In May, AMD rolled out the second version of the FSR. The main change is that now it uses temporal scaling. In other words, it uses data from previous frames. This allows you to better track movement and remove ripples along the edges of objects, simultaneously increasing the clarity of the picture. AMD claims that in fact, FSR 2.0 is an open source analog of DLSS, and if your game already supports the NVIDIA scaling technology, you can introduce AMD Super Resolution support in it in just a couple of days, since the most important thing, which is the calculation of motion vectors, is already there. Therefore, it is not surprising that third-party software creators quickly realized that if a developer can add FSR 2.0 support to a DLSS game in a couple of clicks, then why not do it yourself? And thus, the DLSS Unlocker was born. Using the software is not hard either. Download it at the link below, extract it into the folder of the game that has DLSS 2.0 support, run the registry modification file, agree to the changes and voila, you can run Cyberpunk on GTX 1060 and surprise everyone with the active DLSS option, which in fact will work as FSR. The advantage of this method is obvious. The second version of Super Resolution works much better than the first one, although it's still inferior to DLSS 2.0. Taking into account the fact that the NVIDIA technology is present in the latest graphics-intensive games, this utility is just a gift to the owners of the not-so-new graphics cards, which allows them to comfortably play with a nice picture on the flagship cards of previous years. But the disadvantage here is obvious too. In games without DLSS, 
this method will not work, and you will have to settle for FSR 1.0. Okay, above we have analyzed the scaling methods that work on any graphics cards, but require the use of third-party tools. Now, let's talk about technologies that work only on certain cards, and let's start with NVIDIA Image Scaling, or NIS. In fact, this is almost a complete analog of FSR, but it turns on directly in the NVIDIA Control Panel, or GeForce Experience settings. It requires the 496th version of the driver, or newer, and also requires at least a Maxwell graphics card, that is, GTX 750 or 750 Ti, or GTX 900 and newer. In order to enable it, go to the NVIDIA Control Panel, 3D Parameters Control, and in the Global Parameters, adjust the Image Scaling slider. You can also adjust sharpness directly in the game by pressing Alt F3 if the NVIDIA Overlay is enabled. As I have already said, this technology is similar in quality to FSR, but in the case of NVIDIA graphics cards, it is easier to enable and you can fine-tune it. In fact, it has only one disadvantage. The still popular graphics cards of the 600 and 700 series, which need this function the most, are not supported, so you have to use a third-party FSR in this case. AMD went exactly the same way. The FSR technology is available to everyone and is activated in the game settings. But in the driver settings, you can also find an option called Radiant Super Resolution. It works similarly to FSR, but of course, there are more restrictions. Only Radeon RX 5000 and newer graphics cards, as well as the Adrenaline Edition 22.3.1 and newer drivers are required. So there is only one advantage here. Owners of the fresh red graphics cards do not need any additional software to activate FSR in any game. Enabling RSR is simple. Just go to the Adrenaline settings in the Graphics tab, and then activate the corresponding item. Now, all that needs to be done is to set the resolution of the game below the one that your monitor has, and the RSR will start working. The only shortcoming here is that it works only on relatively new AMD cards. Alright, now we know what to do if your graphics card can't render enough frames, but you still wanna play. But there are also reverse situations. Say you have an RTX 3060, a full HD monitor, and 1.5 frames per second in some old game that does not offer the best graphics, and the GPU load is not even close to 100%. Is there any way to exchange the extra performance for improving the quality of the picture? Of course, virtual resolution is here at your service. The idea here is simple, and in fact, this is how super sampling anti-aliasing works. The graphics card renders the image in a higher than native resolution, after which it is displayed in the resolution of your monitor, and the excess information generated in the process is used for improving graphics and reducing aliasing. In fact, this is an analog of scale greater than 100% in supported games, but this can be enabled for any project. NVIDIA has virtual resolution called DSR, which is located in the control panel in the 3D parameters control tab. After checking the boxes with increased resolution, they will appear in the game. What are the disadvantages? Firstly, there is a huge drop in performance. So it is worth using it either on top tier cards or in old games, or both actually. Secondly, not all projects are able to scale the interface correctly, that is, everything can become too small. But in any case, there are usually no serious problems with this on a scale of 125 to 150% but the picture becomes noticeably clearer. For AMD, this technology is called Virtual Super Resolution and it is enabled in the Adrenaline settings in the Display tab. After that, in the Game settings, it becomes possible to set a higher than native resolution and it will work. And finally, an exclusive feature for the owners of RTX graphics cards that come with Tensor Cores. The idea here is that you can use DSR not head-on, which is resource-intensive, but additionally enable AI algorithms to restore picture from smart DLSS smoothing. This allows you to use a smaller virtual resolution to get the same picture quality. NVIDIA claims it doubles the performance. At the same time, the technology works in any game, even if it does not have DLSS support. But alas, in this case, you must have an RTX graphics card. DLDSR is enabled in the same place as DSR, in the NVIDIA control panel in 3D parameters control. And then maybe someone will recall image scaling by Intel called XESS, which also works on NVIDIA and AMD cards, albeit less efficiently than on Intel solutions. Can it be used in any game like FSR? Alas, at the moment, rather no than yes. AMD's FSR technology is open source and accessible to everyone. In the case of XESS, 
Intel asks game developers to contact them directly to get access to the source code. It is quite possible that sooner or later the source code might leak and the program will be created to activate this type of scaling in any project, but so far this has not happened, and XESS is present only in a couple of dozen Intel approved games. With the release of DLSS, Nvidia opened Pandora's box, where AMD quickly followed and made FSR, which is available to everyone and we should thank them for that. Taking into account the fact that games are getting more demanding and 4K resolution no longer seems to be something sky-high, scaling technologies will continue to develop and get better. For example, Nvidia made a technology that is capable to render entire frames by neural network alone. Is it good or is it bad? You can argue about it for a long, long time, but one thing is for sure. FSR gives the old graphics cards a second life, allowing their owners to touch modern games. I'm waiting for you in the comment section. My name is Mikhail Krushen. The communication session is over. Bye.